Global Healthcare Conference. My name is Craig Hettenbach. I'm a new member of the healthcare services team, and I'm pleased to have uh, Jeff Arnold, Chairman and CEO of ShareCare, and Justin Ferrero, President and CFO, here with us today. Uh, for those of you who are new to the company, ShareCare is a comprehensive digital health platform that serves employees, health plans, providers, and consumers to help build longer and better lives. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to point out that for important disclosures, please see Morgan Stanley Research Disclosure website at www.morganstanley.com backslash research disclosures, and investors are able to submit questions through the webcast. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Jeff. He has some introductory remarks and is going to walk through our presentation to begin. Uh, so over to you, Jeff. Okay, thanks, Craig. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's great to be here today. And, uh, Thanks for having us. Um, so we prepared some slides to take the audience to share care as, as, as many know, we're a recently new public company as of July 1st. And so kind of starting off on, you know, on slide three uh, for the audience, um, I've spent my career in digital health for some time, uh, started WebMD back in 1998. So I've uh, been around the space and uh, 2012, um, I'd sold the company to Discovery Channel and uh, got introduced to some folks and started thinking about how could you go back to the original vision of WebMD of health having a homepage, but really expand that now that people had had uh, cell phones and be able to use technology and build platforms that could go beyond just getting information, which is what we were doing in the late 90s, but actually start to connect the ecosystem to the palm of the person's hand. So how could you bring the doctor and how could you bring the health plan and how could you build, bring the employer by creating really compelling value propositions for the user? So we start share care. Uh, as a private company, uh, prior to our SPAC, we raised uh, $500 million, uh, a lot from strategic investors with the idea of how could ShareCare become a digital ally for big trusted brands. So we had a strategy of going to the living room and getting investors like Oprah Winfrey and Discovery Channel and others. Uh, we had a, a strategy of going to the exam room and getting big health systems like HCA and Trinity Health and others. And we had a strategy of going to the workplace and getting big blues plans and the Aflacs and the Swiss, Swiss Rees to invest. And with that capital, the goal was all about getting scale. And Justin's gonna to talk to you about the scale of our business, which you know includes over 9 million eligible lives and over $400 million in revenue. And we've been able to do all this while we've been profitable. If you look at slide four, uh, when we did a very successful pipe offering where we raised over $425 million, which was double oversubscribed during the process, we really positioned our business as a category of one. So what makes ShareCare a category of one? And what makes ShareCare a category of one, we believe came down to these four pillars. Uh, the first is how do we build a comprehensive platform? Um, so people are all on different types of journeys. Our clients have major vendor fatigue. How could we be that one-stop shop by having all the capabilities necessary to educate a person on what their baseline was, what their real time was, and more importantly, how we could take them on a data-driven, evidence-based journey. So tons of capabilities. With that capabilities have come lots of diversification, not only in products, but in uh, revenue and scale. And so I'm going to take you through our three business units, uh, which are made up of enterprise, provider, and consumer. And you're going to see lots of logos, uh, which is exciting to us because we see lots of ways to win and lots of ways to grow with the customers that we have. And third on this slide, on, on slide four, is this idea that our clients buy share care for our data and our innovation. Uh, we believe that uh, we're not only operators being a, uh, a profitable company, uh, but uh, we're also innovators and we're doing some amazing things in the digital health space. And lastly, uh, we have really diversified financial performance. Uh, you know, we think we're positioned for success with strong revenue visibility, scale and profitability. And Justin and I both and the rest of the team have a lot of confidence that this is a company that can grow 20 plus percent year over year. And I'm sure Justin's gonna highlight our most recent quarter. Um, on the next slide, uh, when you think about what is the platform for us, the platform uh, is a one-stop shop. So imagine if you're a big self-insured employer or you're a health plan or a health system and you're having to piece together all these solutions and figure out how do you make it interoperable how do you make it user-friendly and how do you make it affordable? Almost an impossible task. And so what ShareCare does is come in and say, look, we've made 18 acquisitions over the last decade and we've put all these pieces together for you to be this one-stop shop, which is gonna help you with vendor fatigue and it's gonna help your patient or your member or your employee 
um, with confusion. And the model that we've taken is what we call the five M's. So how do we get everybody to adopt this idea within the platform that together on behalf of the person who owns their data, um, can we message the person, motivate the person, manage the person's data, measure effectiveness, and more importantly, because we're working together um, in this all together better way that we can create a movement that the healthy choice is the easy choice. If to take you into our various operating units uh, quickly, uh, starting on slide seven, the way we bring this uh, platform to market is uh, first through enterprise. And so enterprise for us is made up of government clients, uh, is made up of health plan clients, and is made up of employer clients. And um, this is about a $240 million division for us. And if you were thinking of us as like as a wedding cake, think of enterprise as the foundation. And within this platform, what we sell to our clients is uh, benefits navigation, healthcare navigation, uh, digital therapeutics, uh, wellness, and, and various other um, uh, solutions. And our revenue model works is that it's, uh, they're typically multi-year agreements, usually three to five years. Uh, so they're recurring in nature and they have uh, a lot of various upsells. And so I think we have over a billion dollars, for example, of upsell opportunities within that $240 million revenue base where our, our clients have contracted for us beyond our per member per month to buy additional solutions as we enroll their members into that. And I think you know what's really impressive about our enterprise segment is uh, the quality of logos that we've assembled. And so starting on the key health plans, um, we've been focused initially on the blues. So going to the blues plans and saying, you know, how can share care be your digital ally? Um, you have the United and the Optums, how can there be share care and Blue Cross solutions? Uh, not that we don't do work with United as well, and so, um, so we have Anthem, uh, who's an investor in the company, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona, who's an investor in the company, Care First, which is the Blues in Maryland's an investor in the company. Uh, we've picked up Highmark in Pennsylvania, Minnesota, and others. And in 2021, we've expanded beyond the Blues. I mentioned uh, United and, and now Kaiser, uh, but we also do work with Centene on the managed care side. And we launched our first, uh, our first customers with Humana in 2021. Uh, so there's huge growth there. Anthem's got 44 million members, uh, in, you know, just with them. Uh, on the key employer clients, we focus on the on the big jumbo employers, um, the big self-insured folks. I think our big 2021 win uh, was Delta. Uh, so during COVID, uh, you know, Delta switched over from Rally, which they were using at United uh, to share care. So we uh, onboarded 70,000 plus of their associates and have really worked with their leadership team, HR, CEO, and others to build what we're calling a culture of well-being. And then lastly, on, on key public sector clients, that's like the state of Georgia, where states are usually the largest employer in any geography. And so in Georgia, where we're headquartered, uh, we have 650,000 state employees enrolled into share care. So think about 200,000 public school teachers going through a lot right now with the pandemic that are using share care to help manage their anxiety and navigate their benefits. On slide eight, uh, think of this as the middle of the wedding cake is our provider layer. And so what I learned at WebMD um, was that the doctor is an important component in trying to disrupt healthcare, um, that there's a strong bond between the patient and the provider. And we wanted to make sure at ShareCare that we, that we could um, really cement that using technology, not disenfranchise it. And so the way we went about it is today, we've now built over $100 million in revenue with over 6,000 health systems, uh, starting with the patient view first of, you know, if you're going to have all your health in one place and be a single platform through ShareCare, you need to have access to your medical records. And so this year we'll collect over 5 million medical records and get paid for that uh, on behalf of uh, folks that come to ShareCare and need their uh, medical record information. But that's given us a giant footprint of uh, over a million providers that we're now working with in various ways. And in 2021, we said, you know, how do we start to create the ShareCare enabled clinician? So when you see the ShareCare logo, you know with your doctor that you can share your data or your doctor can prescribe ShareCare. And so we bought a company called Visualize Health. Uh, we bought a company um, uh, called um, uh, White Hat. And that was all around getting financial alignment with the doctor. So as physicians go from fee-for-service to value-based care, we needed to have the technologies in the platform that would allow them to do that. Uh, so that's our big kind of provider strategy, but uh, it's grown organically amazing. I think we've taken our medical record business organically from 
$20 million to uh, $100 million almost in the last five years. And uh, as we've organically grown that business as the high quality provider. Lastly, from a business segment, uh, another area that really differentiates share care is our thought is, you know, you, you can't raise a billion dollars privately and publicly and have a vision to disrupt healthcare and really change it and uh, say that the only way that a person can get share care is if their employer or their health plan uh, buys it for them or their doctor prescribes it. Obviously, that's better for our users because there's more data that the user gets. But we also wanted to be able to provide this direct to consumer. And the advantage that we saw in doing that was we would be able to go to our clients, maybe say Delta, for an example, and say, look, we already have thousands of your employees on the platform as consumers. Imagine when we connect the health benefits, that type of engagement that we would get that maybe you've suffered with in the past. Uh, this unit generates over $65 million in revenue for us. And so, you know, we work with very sophisticated marketers. You know, that's the big pharma companies. And uh, the benefit of doing that profitably, by the way, is uh, it allows us to invest heavily in content. And so we've created over 50,000 videos. I, I would, you know, I, you know, I would like to think that we've got by far the best content assets in the industry. And that really benefits our enterprise and provider segments because it really differentiates us because we have such rich personalized content. Uh, we also know how to reach people where they're at. So we have over two and a half million social followers. And so if you're one of uh, our prospective clients, there's a good chance that those employees or those members are following us on ShareCare. And there's a good chance that our clients are promoting for them to do that because they know the information that we're providing is, uh, is world-class. And uh, we've built a database of over 100 million users. We've had over 50 million people take the real age test. Uh, we enroll over 400,000 new people every 30 days. And so this is a, a really robust uh, uh, segment for us that really helps differentiate us and grow our enterprise business. I mentioned on uh, moving past slide 10 into slide 11 is uh, we're heavy into innovation. Uh, we're huge believers uh, in leveraging technology to empower people and change healthcare. And I'm gonna quickly take you through a few segments of that. Um, one is uh, in AI. So we made a, a big acquisition in February of a company called Doc AI. Uh, Doc AI is based out in Palo Alto, uh, 77 engineers uh, led by uh, uh, an amazing uh, management team that are what I call futurists, you know, investing in uh, federated learning, investing in the edge of, uh, of cloud computing, investing in zero trust. And our idea was, is we have so much data because we collect data, uh, you know, uh, when it's self-reported like real age. We collect data through the devices by tracking sleep and steps and other things. We get all the medical claims data. We get all the social determinants of health data. And as I mentioned, 5 million medical records. So how could we turn that data into insights? And uh, we found Doc AI, uh, Anthem, uh, the largest blues plan, was a big investor in Doc AI and had a $100 million AI contract that they had executed with them last year. And in February, we acquired them. Uh, Anthem rolled over their investment. Anthem joined our board of directors. And we've been you know, using this AI technology to really you know, go through the entire fabric of ShareCare to create what we call the best next action. So how does the AI, the data, create the insight to the action? Uh, but this is a big part of our business. This slide kind of shows you the different ways that we're doing that. Slide 12, I wanted to mention our multi-payer uh, advocacy platform. Uh, so Anthem made a $50 million direct investment um, into ShareCare in April, uh, right around uh, the timing of the pipe. And what we're building together is a multi-payer advocacy platform. And so in the spirit of creating this one-stop shop, if you're one of maybe up to the 12 million members of Anthem that are on multi-payer solutions, so not 100% Anthem, maybe Anthem's 80%, another health plan has the rest of the business, how can ShareCare become that advocate on behalf of that member. So it's a one-stop shop, not only for your medical information, but your dental information, your vision information, your second opinions, your network, your deductibles, your digital therapeutics, you know, all in one in, in one offering. And we're calling that ShareCare Plus. We're extremely excited about it because it's gonna increase our PM, PM dramatically. And, uh, and we're developing uh, a strong go-to-market, will be completed, uh, with the first version of this product in 2021 and expect to have clients in 2022 and big scale in 2023. Next slide on slide 13 is uh, as we've been building out our platform 
and what I've been describing. Think of about think of it as like kind of four components. The first component is what I call wellness, which is how do I onboard a, a person onto the platform? Really difficult for insurance companies and employers to do. Um, so instead of them offering 12 solutions, get them into one altogether better solution in share care. And when we do that, use the AI to create a digital twin. And so if, you know, looking at cost of care, we know based on our data and what we can predict, if people go down this road, it's gonna cost you X amount of dollars. If they go down this road, it's gonna cost you Y amount of dollars. Let's get them on the right path. Uh, the second component is our digital therapeutics. So how do we build like our version of iTunes from allergies to women's health that has every digital therapeutic from maternity to MSK that's evidence-based that helps a person get better faster? Uh, the third is what I just mentioned, which is ShareCare Plus, which is our advocacy solution. So how do we become that one-stop shop on behalf of the person so they don't have to call all these different phone numbers to figure out what to do? And the last version, which we're really excited about, is a company that we acquired from Generali uh, a few weeks ago, Generali being a big insurance company in Italy called CareLinks. Uh, CareLinks is a tech-enabled home care provider. Think of this as like a match.com meets Uber. You go in and you look at profiles and you find the right person for you. You do telemedicine basically to figure out through interviews, is this the right person for your mom or for your kids? And, uh, and then, and then um, you can launch that caregiver. And it's like watching the person go to the house through Uber. There's digital care plans. They take pictures of what's in the refrigerator, what are the medications. And two years ago, this service that I'm describing, ADL, Activities of Daily Living, is now covered uh, for Medicare Advantage. And so you could get in an MA plan up to 12 hours of these types of services. Uh, for a provider, um, you know, as they go to value-based care, they need to go into the home and do assessments. This becomes like our geek squad uh, for being able to do things like remote patient monitoring and telehealth. But we now have 450,000 licensed caregivers as part of ShareCare. And Justin will talk to you about the phenomenal growth, five to 20 plus million dollars just in the last year alone. On slide 14, uh, I think the pandemic has taught us that our environment is as important to our health as our lifestyle and our genetics. We are a leader in this area. We've invested over $80 million, basically being able to rank every zip code in America. We sit on data that will tell you what America's heartbeat looks like, your physical health, your mental health, your financial health, your sense of community. And we use this data to work with our clients to uh, configure the right offering for the right population of where they live, work, and play. Um, and then slide 15 is when the pandemic happened, we said, look, share care needs to have broad, have broad brand permission. Um, we want to help people navigate their entire journey. We don't want to just be a telehealth company or, or just a diabetes company or a home health company. We want to have broad brand permission. And to reopen the world, people are going to have to feel safe as they go back to work, as they start to travel again. So we've built a really robust health security platform. It's been adopted already in 80 countries. Uh, thousands of hotels, uh, arenas, uh, offices, and soon to be schools, which is introducing many, many people to the ShareCare brand and becoming users of our platform. And with that, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Justin Ferrer, who I've worked with for the last 20 years, who's our uh, CFO. Okay. Justin, real quick, before you get into on slide 17, our key financial highlights, would you take a moment and just uh, talk uh, this week? I, there was a a uh, note that went out on Bloomberg about a filing that we did last week that I think needs a correction. And I was hoping maybe quickly you could touch on that. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, so I think if uh, most people may have seen that, we, we did a, a standard uh, registration, an S1 and an S8 to register our incentive plan and affiliate stock. I think there's two key takeaways that may be misunderstood, which is that uh, of these shares, they were all previously disclosed. So there's no additional dilution uh, to our shareholders from those registrations. It was simply normal course registration of stock. Uh, and importantly, uh, which may have also been misunderstood, is that the shares that were registered, almost all of them, 99%, are locked up to next year. So there's no flood to the market currently of uh, additional shares that have been unlocked or new shares that have been issued as part of some sort of financing, et cetera. It uh, seems there was a misunderstanding through the Bloomberg article, and we wanted to clarify two important points. No additional dilution. All of these have been uh, previously disclosed. It was a simple registration. And importantly, uh, these shares are 99% locked up. So quick clarification on that. Um, 
Well, Justin, take us, take us, if you don't mind, just through the key financial highlights. Okay, good. So, so quickly, um, you may have seen this uh, uh, slide 17 from previous uh, from previous presentations. So we have a great business. The key highlights is that uh, we have high revenue visibility. It's a recurring revenue-based model with long-term contracts. We have scale, as Jeff just took you through. There's thousands of happy customers that we have that range from health plans to hospitals to government agencies, which gives us a lot of ways to drive growth from new logos to digital therapeutics to value-based care to health security, now home health through the CareLinks acquisition, you know, and we're profitable, um, you know, adjusted EBITDA positive, which uh, means that the capital from this recent lease back and raise uh, goes towards acquisitions and growth versus funding losses. So a very, very clean balance sheet and a, and a great business model. On slide 18, I uh, just wanted to quickly update everybody on our uh, uh, our Q2, which was a fantastic quarter. Uh, we provided guidance of 96 to 98 and a half million. We came at the high end of that range. Uh, we provided guidance of six and a half million for adjusted EBITDA. We exceeded that target while investing significantly in, in growth. Um, and we had a great quarter. As Jeff touched on, uh, we, we closed a $50 million investment from the second largest health plan in, in, in Anthem. We, we added new customers across all of our channels and, uh, and we executed on our land and expand strategy as we highlight here, where we started in Georgia with Centene as an example. We've now expanded into California and Oregon through winning the, the health net contract. So um, real excited about the results for Q2. And then uh, on Q3 and really, uh, I'll, I'll turn you to slide 19 now, we, um, we're off to a great start. We, uh, we made a, uh, an exciting acquisition in CareLinks uh, that brings us into the home health space. They've grown from 5 million last year. Our pro forma this year is for 20 million, you know, 400% growth, all organic. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we provided guidance for next year of around 70% growth to 35 million. Again, all organic. And we believe we made an excellent acquisition for the shareholders here as we paid less than two times 2022. A lot of our peers are out in the market these days paying north of 10 times of 2022. So I feel like it was an excellent acquisition. And with that, we increased our guidance uh, for this year from 408 million to a, a range of 414 to 415. As we have a stub period here for the CareLinks acquisition, we believe they'll come in around 7 million for you know, half of August through December. So that's 26% growth over 2020 for the year. Uh, and we increased our guidance for 2022 from 533 million to 568. And that's 37% growth over 2021. So very bullish, um, not only on the business and the remainder of the year, but as we uh, look out into to 2022 as well. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll hand it back to you, Jeff or Craig. Great, thanks, Justin. Craig. Thanks for letting us uh, take everybody through our presentation and happy to answer any questions. Yeah, sure. Thank you both, um, Jeff and Justin, for covering a lot of important ground and, and kind of setting the tone here. You know, maybe just to dig into capital allocation, that seems to be an important part of the strategy, kind of the platform that you've built organically and through M&A. You touched on two acquisitions, Doc AI and CareLinks. Can you just maybe just expand on kind of how you envision building this platform going out in, in, into the future organically and through M&A? Yeah, sure, Justin, maybe I'll start and feel free to jump in. Um, as Justin mentioned, I think what's great about ShareCare is that we're not you know, covering losses, right? So we're heavily invested in growth and growth through sales, um, growth through product and tech, which are already super robust. I think we have 450 people in product and tech to build stuff. Um, but also uh, through M&A. And so when I take you kind of through those four pieces, you know, I talked about like the digital twin. And so we're going to continue to invest, invest heavily in AI. I talked about digital therapeutics. Uh, we have a try before you buy strategy. So we look at all these different digital therapeutics from maternity to MSK to diabetes to others. We partner with folks, integrate them, sell them, get results, and then often look to acquire them. Uh, one of those examples is a company we bought in Mind Sciences last year. So we'll continue to look in that area. Uh, advocacy is now, we've got 80 people stacked against our partnership with Anthem. 
Um, I, I could see us going into the payment space. You know, it's like I like when I get out of Uber and I don't have to whip out, you know, a credit card or cash that it's all done. Um, I could see how how payments becomes a piece of our advocacy product um, over time. And we're going to continue to support our home health division, which is growing like a weed. And so we're, you know, some doing some work through, you know, different business segments, not only Medicare Advantage, but Medicaid and government and others of, you know, how could that service and any other capabilities that we could add on to that help us grow there as well. Uh, but it's very, very much on offense. I mean, you know, I've worked with Justin for 20 years. We have an unbelievable corporate development team. We've made all these acquisitions. You know, we did this uh, SPAC with you guys at Morgan Stanley and with Goldman and JP Morgan. Our deal flow is amazing. And, uh, and, and what's great of where we are because of the scale that we have, we, there's no guesswork, right? So we, we go to our customers and we say, you know, we believe this is a capability that is added to the platform that would service you. And today you're buying these types of services, but in a very fragmented way, would it be better for you to do this through ShareCare? And so, uh, and so that's our, that's very much a part of our capital allocation strategy going forward. Great. And then maybe we can just expand on the financial model. Justin, you talked about kind of the visibility that you have into the business. Uh, can you touch on that? And then also as you add these new capabilities, the opportunity to kind of upsell uh, and ex extract value for, for what you're providing. Yeah, our business is great. The, as we talked about, we, uh, we have long-term contracts. Uh, so we have uh, really 90% uh, plus visibility as we go into the year. I know that was an area you wanted to cover. Uh, and then that increases as the years go on. We, we commented on our, on our Q2 call that we're now 97% uh, booked for this year. So uh, it's one of the, the key pillars of our, of our business model is, uh, is, is it's long-term, it's recurring, we don't lose customers. And uh, in many of our business units, we, we can add customers throughout the year and scale quarter over quarter which is another area that we talked about in Q2 and that our, our growth, we see accelerating growth quarter to quarter. So we grew from Q1 to Q2, 10%. Um, and then, you know, we're gonna, we gave guidance in Q3, we're gonna grow again quarter over quarter. So uh, the business is, um, is uh, you know, it's really exciting to be in and we're now actively out selling for 2022 across all channels. and are highly confident in our uh, our guidance for next year. Great. Um, and, and I guess just as we wrap up, I wanted to touch on, on enterprise, and in particular, you highlighted a win on the recent earnings around Nordstrom. It, and really just to give people a sense in terms of when you're out there and winning business like this, you know, why is it a customer like that and others are going to be going with, with share care? I think it's because how comprehensive we are. I mean, this idea, we call it all together better. So we're all together better when you can bring the ecosystem to the palm of the person's hand. So imagine if you're Delta or Nordstorms and, you know, you're trying to promote 10 apps. It's just really hard to get people to onboard and use it. And uh, we're all together better um, when it's a single platform. You know, you log in once, you can access all. And we're all together better that when we can go from individual transformation to uh, community transformation. So how just not a single Nordstrom employee but all Nordstrom's employees. So there's like a network effect. Um, and it's really resonating with our clients is, you know, how not only are you comprehensive, but how do we approach these employees like they're consumers, right? So that consumer is an employee, is a health plan member, is a patient. We need to service them that way. And, and that's what ShareCare does. And as we look going forward, like it, just like to our stock price as an example, you know, it's very simple for us, it, you know, as we've gone public, we said, you know, we have to continue to deliver the numbers, uh, which we had an amazing Q2. Um, we have to continue to do smart M&A on behalf of our customers, and we need to get the research. And so that people understand the, the answer to the question you just asked of why do people buy share care? And so that's our, that's our, that's our big focus uh, at the company, and we intend on delivering against that. Okay. That's great. Well, um, I think we are coming up on time here. So Jeff and Justin, really appreciate your time this morning and for everyone tuning in and, and hope everyone has a great day. Great. Thank you, Craig. Thank you.